Now I talk about the latest on Hurricane Milton as Floridians grapple with the devastating aftermath of the hurricane. Presidential hopefuls are back on the campaign trail, pitching to voters why they are the strongest leaders when faced with a country in crisis. Former President Donald Trump is in Colorado and Nevada, while Vice President Kamala Harris is in Arizona. NBC's Alice Barr joins us this morning live from Washington with the latest. Good morning, Alice. Good morning, Danita. There are so many storm victims in need from both Helene and from Milton, and they're, they're in desperate need of help, and they're looking to the federal government. And the response that they get could have a lot to do with how they plan to vote with less than a month until the election. As the devastation left by Hurricane Milton sinks in. To obtain what, you know, what you have, and then for it to just... <clears throat> Be gone in minutes, because that's, that's all it took. And emergency water rescues wind down. It just started rising from ankle to knee to waist. I had four children there. The long road to recovery is ramping up. Thousands of federal workers joining state and local officials. Every available resource is being deployed as fast as possible to impacted communities, and we will not leave until the work is done. The political fallout also growing as the nominees get back out on the campaign trail. Former President Trump in Michigan continuing to slam the Biden administration's response to the last wave of destruction from Hurricane Helene. The federal government, on the other hand, has, has not done what you're supposed to be doing. Vice President Harris pushing back. I have spoken with state, local officials, both Republican and Democrat, to let them know we will be with you every step of the way as you recover and rebuild. She spoke at a rally in Arizona where early voting is just beginning. As former President Obama began a battleground blitz for Harris in Pennsylvania, calling out misinformation about the federal storm response, elevated by former President Trump and allies. The candidates fighting to show they are the right leader in a moment of crisis as Election Day closes in. And President Biden responded to concerns about FEMA staffing le levels, insisting that the Federal Emergency Management Agency has the resources and the money that it needs for now, while pleading with Congress to come back and act urgently to set aside more money for federal disaster loans for small businesses. Danita. All right, Alice Barr reporting live from D.C. for us this morning. Thank you, Alice. Meantime, officials say nine tornadoes tore through St. Lucie County, Florida, Wednesday, killing five residents and leaving a level of destruction not seen locally for decades. We do know at least one death happened at the Spanish Lakes Country Club Village. A tornado struck there at about 4.30 p.m. on Wednesday, ahead of Milton making landfall on Florida's west coast. It marked the most tornado warnings ever in a single day. The National Weather Service issuing at least 126. Meantime, a Tampa man is going viral online for surviving the hurricane on his sailboat. 54-year-old Joseph Malinowski, dubbed Lieutenant Dan on social media, drew concern after posting several videos suggesting he was going to ride out both Hurricane Helene and Milton on his boat. As Milton made landfall, he was in contact with NBC News, providing updates while he sat in his boat tied to the dock at Tampa Bay Harbor. He explained the wind was coming from a different direction than he expected, but he was still okay. Around 3 a.m. Thursday, he commented on TikTok, saying, quote, I'm alive, God is good. Well, listen to this. A couple in Port Charlotte, Florida, welcomed their first child during the hurricane. Kenzie Llewellyn went into labor as the hurricane was barreling towards the Gulf Coast. She and her boyfriend drove through the wind and the rain to get to the hospital, and they welcomed a baby boy. They named him Dewey after his father and grandfather. And how about this twist of fate? The baby's grandfather and namesake actually died during Hurricane Irma back in 2017. Mm, wow. Well, something good came out of mm. all of that. That's yeah. nice to hear.